the 20th oldest burial ground in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Our founding fathers are buried here. There's no markers for them because in 1849, down by the wall, you see the wall when we came up, you saw how it went up high, then it dropped down low. Yeah. They decided to dig out what was there and put in a pound. Not for dogs, but in the old days when you used to go to the First Baptist Church, you had to tie your horse and your carriage up, and they needed a place for that. What happened, though, is bodies came out as they dug that, and those are probably some of the early founders, they think, so they just picked up their, body, their bones and moved them in the back. What we're doing, just so you know, does anybody know what GPR is? Ground Penetrating Radar. And the city has just started doing a program that we started Monday, if this is the first burial ground. The second burial ground is on Montville Avenue by the Bolodrome. Do you ever go by it and see yeah. all the graves? Yeah. And what happens there is we have a gentleman who's going to go with his machine up and down, and he's going to find all the missing graves of all the, the early settlers that was here. or dig up all their stones so we can find out what we have here. But you know who is here? Fifteen Revolutionary War soldiers. The second burial has 51. But the, Civil War, the Revolutionary War soldier that I want to tell you about is over here, Daniel Thompson. First of all, do you see the uh, obelisk? You know what an obelisk is? It looks yeah. like a pyramid yeah. at the top. Yeah. It's kind of that's, that, that is the obelisk, the tomb for the Baldwin family. Did you learn about the Andy Baldwin? Yeah. And the ball, that's where they're buried. There's like 18 family members buried up there. It's up there. Down below, in that flag that you see straight down, that's where Daniel Thompson is buried. And do you know who Daniel Thompson was from Woburn? These are all Woburn people. Do you know who he was? No. Do you know about the Revolutionary War? When yeah. It's, all right, when did it start? Tell me the date. What was the first battle in Lexington? Battle of Lexington and Concord. When was it? April 19, 1979. And we celebrate what holiday? Patriots Day. And you know why that is? Because of the Patriots who are buried in the cemetery. Daniel Thompson. He heard the alarm on April on April 19th. You know, Paul Revere's coming out. He's warning everybody. Another guy came to move it and warned Daniel Thompson. And Daniel Thompson, in turn, he went and warned 280 Woven people, and they gathered in Woven Common. And they headed up to Russell Street. You know where Russell Street is in the Four Corners? You want that big hill? You know where Battle Road is there? You know we have Battle Road that goes into Lexington and Concord? They headed into Lexington Green, but the battle had already happened. And two Woven men were already there. And the, the soldiers who were killed, the farmers, really, and they were already dead. So the our Woven soldiers under Colonel Baldwin headed to Lincoln Mass. Well, Daniel Thompson was quite a marksman, and he was, you know what a grenadier is, a British grenadier? Did you ever see them in the big red uniforms, the big furry hats on their head? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, Daniel Thompson, he, he got kind of killed a few of them. So one of the grenadiers hid in a tree, and he went behind him in a barn and shot him in the back. And this is our first casualty, military casualty, from the Revolutionary War from moving is Daniel Thompson. He was really, he had five children, he was married, he made the great sacrifice for our freedom, didn't he? Now another death happened that day, and it's this gentleman right here, the second little um, flag that you see there. What do the flag means on the grave? Do you know what the flag means on the grave? They were important in the Revolution. No, not necessarily. It means they were veterans. They could serve any war. When you see a flag on a grave, that means it's a veteran, right? But this gentleman gets one because he really is the first casualty for moving. You know what he was? A farmer. And he was selling his eggs and he was headed into Cambridge and he was Josiah Richardson. Well, the British caught them because they were headed to Lexington and they held them. And what happened was they heard the firing on the green and the British said, you know what? We're going to let you guys go, the two moving guys. But you can't run away. But you know what one of them didn't do? Ecoute, he didn't listen, and that was Ashel Porter, and they shot him in the back. And then Josiah Richardson from Woven, he listened, and he walked away, and he went on to serve in the Revolution. Revolutionary War as a big hero. So he's the first non-combatant, that means someone who's not a soldier, to die from Woven in the Revolutionary War. Now, um, do you know that here in this cemetery, we have the descendants of eight United States presidents are in this cemetery. Can you think of what presidents, relatives are buried here? No. <laughs> good guess, though. Good guess. Anybody else? What? What do they have, like, no, good guess, though. Oh, he was wait, real he's, he's no. president. No. How about Calvin Coolidge? John Adams. John Adams.
for no. New York. Cleveland, Turner, no. Harrison, Hoover, Pierce, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Whoa! The two George Bushes. All of their relatives are buried here. Did I say eight? I can't remember. But they're all relatives. Their ancestors are all colonial relatives. So this is an important place, don't you think? I think we need to take better care of this, don't you think? Yeah. So we're working with the city and trying to get that to happen. Because it's, you know, people have broken the stones, thrown yeah. paint on some of them. Yeah. That's disgraceful. Would you want that on your family stones? No. Well, they don't either, just because they're not here to tell us, right? So, so that's what happened what is, there was an Indian raid. Remember I told you there was some nasty Indians that were kind of mean, and then there was the good, the friendly Indian tribes? Yeah. Well, what happened, there was a raid between these two types of Indian tribes. And the bad ones, they massacred the good ones. And they did it, you know how they did it in the 1600? They had tomahawks, scalping, you know, it was kind of nasty. Well, there was a woman soldier who ran a militia and he went up towards Chelmsford where this happened, because Chelmsford was very, very close to Woven in those days. And what happened was, he found this little girl about 12 years old, a little Indian girl, and she had been scalped and her head had been cracked open. She, but she was still breathing and he couldn't leave her there, right? He could never leave her there. So he brought her back to Woburn and, and, and Susanna Richardson Brooks, because she was married after her husband died, Mr. Richardson, and she lived down by the pond. She had all this herbal medicine. She took this little girl in and what she did was she cured her and she saved her, took her two years to get her back to health, but she went on to live and become a teenager and a young woman. So from that time on, she was considered around colonial Massachusetts as Dr. Susanna, that she had this great power to heal. So it must have been real tough in those days, don't you think? Yeah. I don't know if we could do it, huh? Well, I tell you what, we're going to move on now, and we're going to say goodbye to the first burial ground. But you're going to remember the special place, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes,